Howdy folks, I'm Sam the Flamingo. I'm Amber. And here's some Reddit. Our first letter is titled, Am I the Jerk for Telling My Niece the Family Secret? And this one is a bit of a sad one, so if you're not looking for something that's kind of sad, uh, and it also involves like the death of a uh, spouse, uh, the death of a sibling, so there's a couple content warnings in here, so let's, let's get started. Throw away account. I'm a 35 year old female and I had two older sisters growing up, Jane and Kim. Kim got sick and died, but not before giving birth to my niece, Laura, an 18 year old female. It had been a year after Kim's passing when Jane and Laura's dad, Tom, a 42 year old male, confessed to dating and were now engaged. Everyone was surprised, but no one was vocally disgusted as me. I accused them of cheating. Jane and Tom explained that this wasn't something that they planned, but there was no cheating and that Kim would have wanted them to be happy. Convenient since you know she's dead. I did not attend the wedding and was upset at how everyone else was so accepting of the relationship. But the thing that hurt me the most was how Jane and Tom intended to completely erase Kim from Laura's life. She was barely two when Kim died and they decided that it would be better if Laura thought Jane was her mother in every sense of the word after the adoption was finalized. Tom got rid of any items that would suggest that he and Kim were ever in a relationship and made his family swear to never tell Laura the truth. Jane expected everyone on our side of the family to do the same, but I refused and as such, I was denied access to Laura. It hurt, but when I thought about all those times Kim cried knowing that she wouldn't live long enough to see Laura grow up, there was just no way to, I could honor that lie. They even had Laura's name legally changed to something that Jane liked as Kim picked out Laura's first name. I distanced myself from the family over time over this, but my parents always tried to get us to reconcile, citing that they didn't like this arrangement either, but accepting it was better than not being part of Laura's life at all. I just couldn't do it. Growing up, Laura had really known of me, but we never really interacted. Apparently, she's interested in studying in a field that I work in and reached out to me through social media. The last time I saw her in person was when she was seven and started a tear up at how much she looked like Kim. We would even talk from time to time and eventually Laura asked why I wasn't around. I tried to keep it vague, but Laura knew that there was more to the story as I didn't seem like the person who I was described to be. If we had been talking through DMs like before, I probably wouldn't have done it, but we were video chatting and something about looking directly into her eyes broke me and I confessed to everything. Before Kim died, she and I made a series of videos for Laura to watch at her big moments and I told her that if she ever wanted to watch any of them, that I would send them. Laura asked me to send some and then I heard nothing from her for days. Recently, I got a call from an enraged Jane and Tom berating me for ruining their family. After Laura watched some of the videos, she confronted my parents who confirmed everything. Laura has moved out and currently is not speaking to anyone and no one knows where she is right now. Everyone's angry at me, so am I the jerk? Edited ad because I keep seeing this, let me clarify. My parents talked to Kim and had pictures of her in the house, so Laura knew who she was, she just didn't know that Kim had given birth to her. Again, my parents only went along because Tom and Jane threatened no contact unless they did. I'm upset with what they did, but I understand why they did it, so that's why I still talk to them. When I said that the last time I saw Laura in person was when she was seven, it was in a brief passing. I was coming to visit my parents' house and watched her get in the car as I was pulling up to the driveway. I didn't actually speak to her. During the last few weeks of her life, Kim and I made a series of videos together so that Kim could leave special messages for Laura for important events. Kim also wrote letters for Laura too. Tom got rid of all of the letters and got rid of all the final cuts and the backups of the videos, but I still had copies that he didn't know about. I honestly forgot about them too and only found them when I was moving and saw them in a box. Yes, Jane and Tom had two bio children together. And finally, unless they changed their minds, Jane and Tom had every intention of never telling Laura and didn't think it was a big deal since the family medical history would be the same. 
All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk. Tom and Jane are horrible. Like, this is just heart-wrenching. This story is absolutely horrifying in the respect that they wanted to erase this person from their lives. Like, how could you possibly erase your first wife on top of that? Like, this is a person who he loved and had a child with, and he was going on full bore with just covering up the fact that she even existed, basically. And that's horrible. And deleting and uh, erasing, the, uh, throwing out those letters, deleting the videos, all that kind of stuff, just is just the most horrible thing ever. So, OP, I don't think that you're a jerk in this situation. You had a reaction to a situation that you were put under. She just wanted to know the truth and you finally spilled the beans as to why you weren't ever around. And she must have been really curious about this and wondering why. And I mean, I imagine like this just probably felt like a huge betrayal to her. And, you know, the thing is that you don't hide things like this, right? How, what happens if she saw a newspaper announcement of her birth or any number of things, right? Like there are ways that she could have found this out other than, you know, OP telling her this and she would have been devastated and horrified anyways, right? So I think that the betrayal here is that she was lied to for her entire life and now she can't feel, she feels like she can't trust her own parents because her parents basically tried to erase parts of her that they just thought was inconvenient to have around. So yeah, OP, I totally do not think that you're the jerk in this situation. Anyhow, take care and good luck. In Goth Penguin says, Not the jerk, taking away every bit of her mother and pretending she never existed, taking away her name her mother gave her, those are all jerk moves. And Brown Sugar Bear says, First of all, completely erase that girl's mother from her life. A mother who was not in her life at no fault of her own. Secondly, and I'm saying this for the millionth time, 8 billion people on the planet, stop doing your siblings, exes, partners, and spouses for crying out loud. Not the jerk, Laura deserved the truth, and what her family did was nothing short of outright cruelty. Our next letter is titled, Am I the Jerk for Telling My Fiancé That She's Not the Breadwinner If She's Not Footing the Bills? And doing so in front of our family and friends. And there isn't a content warning on this one. My fiancé and I moved in together shortly before we got engaged. Before we did, we discussed how we would split the housework and bills. 50-50 down the middle with some wiggle room for when the other one needs some help. When we moved, it was into her parents' two-story garage that they converted into basically an apartment. They offered a low rent, $700 total, and pitched in for the electric and internet so we could save money for our own place and wedding. My fiancé earns more than me and it's cool. I'm proud of her. Before we moved in together, it always seemed like she was living paycheck to paycheck and I chalked it up to the apartment that she had prior having an insane high rent. Well, she stuck to the 50-50 arrangement at first concerning her bills, but she often missed and I had to remind her about them. Post engagement, she's back to living paycheck to paycheck, either missing or very late with her part of the monthly rent. Two utilities we pay, groceries, late with her car payment. Her parents have talked to me multiple times about the rent and I've covered her missing portion to get us caught up. And they try talking to her. It always turns out into her saying that we should just move if her parents are going to hound us like this. I told her we're lucky it's her parents because anywhere else they would have kicked us out by now. On top of that, I pay my own bills. I do about 65% of the housework, arrange and pay most of our dates and vacations, gifts for her, pay most towards our pets. I've suggested financial coach, but what kicks me is whenever we're around others, she boasts about being the breadwinner since she earns more, goes on about the stresses of being the main source of income, all the hours that she has to work to quote, pay our bills. I was letting it slide until a few days ago when we were at a get together. She and her sister started up again about her being the breadwinner. Her sister said something to the effect of her ex-boyfriend had a hard time being with someone who earned more. And my fiancé went, 
good thing OP doesn't mind me bringing home the pay. I just told her, because she earns more doesn't necessarily make her the breadwinner when she blows it all on herself and I'm paying most of the bills. She's embarrassed now and keeps saying that I made her look bad and got her in trouble with her parents because now they want to see what she spends her money on each month. But I don't think I did anything wrong. Am I the jerk? Update. 11 last night, I was ready to just postpone the engagement. As of this morning, after talking and things coming to light, we are broken up. Thank you everyone for your responses and input, especially those who encouraged me to look deeper. Quick summary. She felt a joint account would impede her financial independence. She insisted that we could afford her purchases based off our total incomes. Her parents were under the impression that she was also paying off my student loans, my car, my phone, and paying for our vacations. She didn't get evicted from her last apartment, but she was late with her rent often enough that they weren't going to renew her lease. So she didn't suggest us moving into a bigger apartment at her building. Biggest nope, I'm out of here. The monthly take home amount that she told me what she was earned before her wage garnishments were kicked in. In addition to mass debt, she's been doing some stuff online to make up for the money that she loses due to that. Yes, I got the ring back. And again, thank you to everyone, but I will not be responding to any more comments. I'm going to go take some time for myself and get stuff figured out. All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk. I mean, OP, I think you had a good point here, and it was really frustrating that you were here paying more than 50% of the expenses, and for her to be like, oh, I'm the breadwinner, I'm, you know, paying all the bills and stuff like that, and me claiming that she's, like, doing more than she was. And it was all just a facade so that people would not question how much money she was earning, it seems like. She wasn't doing this because she, you know, was proud of how much she earned. It seems like she was doing this so that she could cover up the fact that she was, uh, you know, doing, spending a lot of her money here, right? So I think that this was really shady of her, and I'm glad that you were able to figure out what kind of person she was before you got married to her, because then you would have been stuck with a lot more than just, uh, <laughs> you know, a partner who brags about bringing in more income, right? And also, it sounds like she, this online stuff, um, you know, if she was doing online stuff without your knowledge or consent, and that might have been a huge, depending on what this online stuff involves, could have been a huge boundary violation. So, OP, I wouldn't blame you in the least for, uh, you know, not sticking around when she was, you know, actively doing stuff behind your back and not telling you. So, yeah. Anyhow, take care and good luck. <laughs> and Fuji... Kiaki Yosho says, uh, <laughs> that's a mouthful. <laughs> Not the jerk, though you're focusing on the wrong problem. Forget perception. You need to sort out her financial irresponsibility before you marry or things aren't going to get any better. And OP replies, I put the brakes on any more wedding planning until she either sees a financial coach or therapist to figure out what's up with her way of doing things. And it sounds like her way of doing things was not very good. Uh, and SlitherCon says, not the jerk, but why are you walking into this with your arms wide open? Like, that's a huge red flag. Do you want financial abuse issues all your life because she can't get herself together? That's the real issue here. Run while you still can. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. Amber has water. Her allergies were acting up today, and that's why she decided that she wasn't going to be able to read with us. So... Hopefully her allergies are feeling a little better for next week. I'll let you guess what kind of tea I have while we hunt down the joke book. Do you have a joke you want to share, Amber? Sure. What did the angry patron at the Monster Diner say to their server? I don't know what. Waiter, there's some soup on my flies. <laughs> I've heard a variation on something like yeah, that. There's a variation on <laughs> the Monster Joke Book I had when I was a kid. So. And there you go. That's your joke for the day. And I have Earl Grey. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Happy Friday, Junior. I hope you're all having a great week so far, and I hope that everything is going splendidly and swell for you. So anyhow, take care, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. And Fuji Kitten Kit... Fuji Kita Kyoshio... Uh, oh, no.